Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's question comes from David. Now, David sent me a real long email, and I tried to ascertain exactly where he was going with that, so I rewrote his question a little bit. But you get the gist. He says, in my form, I've got certain fields that are made not visible based on the user's input in other fields. For example, if the customer is not active, I can hide his credit limit field. I used an after update event for this. That means you check the box active and it shows the credit limit. If you uncheck the box, it will hide that field completely so the user doesn't have to look at it. However, when I open the form or move from record to record, the credit limit field is still visible. How can I hide this field based on the current customer's existing value? In other words, here's a basic customer form, okay? I've got an is active field, and if this customer is not active, I want to hide the credit limit. If they're not an active customer, we'll assume they don't have a credit limit. Now, you can put an after update event in this box here, which I'll show you in a second, which will basically hide this. However, when you move from record to record, that, that code doesn't fire because it's locked to the after update event. So how do you do that? All right, first things first, if you don't know what an after update event is, I've got another tutorial on my channel that explains how to use an after update event to change something when you update a field. You type in someone's name or you check a box or anything like that. It's called an after update event. Looks like I uploaded it back in 2008 with 56,000 views so far. And I want to know who these five people are that gave me a thumbs down. Come on. And check out that classic font, Access Learning Zone. Wow, that's old. So stop now and go watch that tutorial if you don't know what after update events are. I'll put a link in the description box below this video. Okay, now that we know what after update events are, what I want to happen is when I click on this box, I want my after update event to hide or show this credit limit box. Okay, and more importantly, when I move from record to record, I want that to update. All right, so let's put the after update event in first. Let's go to design view. Let's go to my is active checkbox. Make sure you're on the checkbox and not the label. Labels don't have events in them. So make sure you click on the checkbox here. All right, on your event tab, we're going to find after update. This is the after update event. Click on the dot, dot, dot button. If you see the builder window appear up here, pick code builder. Here's my visual basic editor. We're going to use a little if then statement in here to to change whether or not that field is visible or not based on its value. So here I'm going to say if is active, that's the name of my field, then now is active is a checkbox, so it's basically a Boolean value, true, false, yes, no, on, off. So I don't have to say in here equals true. That's just assumed, all right, because this is a yes or no value. So I can just say if is active, then now I want to make that field visible or not. Let's see what the name of the field is. Credit limit. What's the name of it? It's just credit limit. Okay. And then we have a label next to it. That's label 11. So we have to make both of these things invisible. Let's just do this box for now and see what happens here. So that's credit limit. So I'm going to say credit limit dot visible equals true. Make it visible. Else, otherwise, credit limit dot visible equals false. And if. There's a little simple if statement. Yeah, I got videos for that too. I'll put a link below. Let's see this in, in action here. Save it. Let's close the Visual Basic Editor, close the form, open it back up again. Now, notice if I move from record to record, nothing happens yet. We haven't gotten to that part yet. Let's just check the, the active box here. Click. All right. I, I just checked it on, so that box is made visible, which it was before. That's fine. Turn it off, and now it hides. All right. Now, here's one of the benefits of the newer versions of Access. In the older versions, this didn't work that way. You'd have to specify code for the label separately. But since this is a joined label, it belongs to that text box, you don't have to do that in the newer versions of Access. Otherwise, we would just need another line of code that says label name dot visible also equals true or false. Okay, but now here's the problem. All right, I checked this box off. Now this is now invisible. Now if I move to the next record, look at that. Jim Kirk here is active, but his box is still hidden. That's because this code only runs when you change the checkbox there. All right. Now, if I click on it, it'll come back. 
So I want this code here to run when I move from record to record and when this form is open and closed. Because if I close this and open it back up again, he's inactive, but I'm still seeing his credit limit. So what do we do? Well, let's go back into our Visual Basic Code, Design View. Now on the Design tab here, there's a button that says View Code. That's the fastest way to get in there. Or just leave this open. Instead of closing it, just minimize it. So I got my after update code all set up here. What I need to do is find the on current event for the form itself. So go to the forms properties, click on this little box right here. Now I'm on the form properties. Find the on current event. On current, it says it's a macro function that runs on focus moves from one record to another. That also includes the first record when you open a form. All right, so I'm gonna go to on current dot dot dot. That puts me back in the visual basic editor and now we're in here inside of form current. Now put whatever code you want in here to run when you move from record to record. So I'm just going to copy and paste the same thing. Okay, yeah, that's not great programming standards, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. The bottom line is, for right now, the same thing will happen twice here. All right, it'll happen when the, when the box is updated and when you move from record to record. Let's give it a try. Save that, let's close the form, and reopen it. Okay, look, now he's not active and... His box is gone. Let's move to the next record. He's active and his box appears. Move to the next record, active, and it's there. Turn that off. Go back. Go back. See? On off. Move to the next record. And so on. So what happens is now it'll run in the after update event and it will run in the on current event, which happens when you open the form and when you move from record to record. Now I mentioned a second ago, this isn't necessarily great programming technique. Ideally, what you want to do is create your own function or your own subroutine and put that code in there once and then call that subroutine from both of these other places. That way, if you make changes to this, you don't have to remember to change it in two locations or more. Sometimes you'll have the same code that you want to run in different places, three, four, five different spots inside your form. So for that, we'll want to make a custom subroutine. Now, if you want to see how to do that, I'm posting it as a members only video. I will not only show you how to set up a custom subroutine so your code can run from one place, but I put a bunch of other tricks and stuff in here too. I'll show you how to change the color of the form as you move from record to record. Notice the difference between active and inactive customers. The background of the form changes. You can change fields. I change this to a toggle button instead of a checkbox. So look, as you move from record to record, the button goes up and down. The caption changes from active to not active and the color of the caption text as well. Plus, if you take someone who's got a credit limit and they're active and you mark them inactive, I'll show you how to prompt the user and ask, hey, do you want to set this customer's credit limit to zero? If you say no, it leaves it alone in there. If you go back to active, you'll see that, see? But if you say yes, it zeroes it out. That way their, their credit limit doesn't show up in all your reports and stuff, right? Come back in here and notice it's zero now, see? So once again, that's all covered in the members only edition of this Tech Help video. How do you become a member? Well, just click on the join link below this video. You'll see a list of all the options available. Silver members and higher get access to the extended tech help videos. Watch the little video there that pops up on the window. It'll explain all the different membership levels. But even if you don't want to become a member, that's okay. I'm still going to be posting these free tech help videos on my channel. Just members will get extra content. They'll get longer stuff. But make sure you subscribe to my channel. Click on the subscribe button. That's free. And if you click on the little bell there and pick all, you'll get email notifications whenever I release new videos. Don't worry, nothing is changing. I'm still going to be making these free tech help videos for everybody. Free of charge. Just members will get more stuff. There's extra perks. Make sure you stop by my website and subscribe to my access forum. If you got questions, send them to me on the tech help page. And of course, members will get priority for me answering their questions. But I still will read your questions if you send them to me. Now, if you haven't taken my free Access Level 1 class, there's the link. It's absolutely free. It's on YouTube. It's on my website. Three hours long. Wait, where's the thing? Three hours long, right? Just like Gilligan's Tour. And it'll cover all the basics of Access. If you've never used Access before, or even if you've been using it for a while and you're not sure how you're doing stuff, well, check out that. It'll give you some good fundamentals. And if you like Level 1, Level 2, which is another hour-plus long video, is just a dollar. Okay, folks, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.